Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, To start with the applied anatomy, I'm gonna discuss today the anatomic considerations explaining the leak and reflux uh, after sleeve gastrectomy I'm Dr. Dania Saleh, professor and head of anatomy department at Mansoor University The objectives of my presentation is about the following uh, first, I will discuss the functional anatomy of the stomach and the gastroesophageal junction. Then, I'm gonna discuss the anti reflux barriers. Then, the arterial supply of the stomach and the gastroesophageal junction. Uh, to start first with the arrangement of the muscle coat of the stomach, like any other part of the gastrointestinal tract, uh, the arrangement of the muscle fibers are as follows. We have outer longitudinal muscle layer and inner circular muscle layer. For the outer longitudinal muscle layer of the stomach, on the right side, uh, they form a thick strand that extends along the lesser curvature uh, of the stomach. It is called the medial longitudinal band, which divides before reaching the interior angularis into two branches, passing on either side of the lesser curvature. While on the left side, the longitudinal fibers pass in a circular manner over the fundus and then downwards in a broad band on either side of the greater curvature. The fibers are then thin over the anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach body. Over the biloric antrum, the fibers collect into thicker strands on the anterior and posterior surfaces forming the ligamenta ventriculi. Then we have the circular muscle layer. It is called the middle circular layer. It encircles the entire stomach and forms the principal part of its muscular coat. It gets thicker at the pylorus, interlacing with the longitudinal layer forming the pyloric sphincter. Then we have a peculiar uh, layer of the muscle coat that lies only at the stomach, it is called the inner oblique layer. It is limited only to the vertical part of the stomach, and by the vertical part I mean the fundus and body. It is most developed near the cardiac orifice. Many fibers pass parallel to the left of the lesser curvature, forming what's called the sling muscle layer. Other fibers blend with the circular fiber layer as they approach the greater curvature. So we have something called the suspensory apparatus of the stomach, that holds the shape of the stomach in its peculiar shape, especially when it is full with food. So the suspensory apparatus of the stomach is formed of the following. Uh, first, the sling fibers of the inner oblique layer, uh, the medial longitudinal band that lies along the lesser curvature, and the two ligamenta ventriculi on both sides of the pylorus. So any disruption of the suspensory apparatus of the stomach during sleep gastrectomy may lead to um, complications like twisting or kinking or uh, structures or any other complication that may arise following this kind of operation. Next, I'm going to discuss the gastric motility. Functionally, uh, the stomach is divided into uh, the gastric reservoir part or the orad part including uh, the fundus on the upper part of the body and the gastric pump part which is called the caudate part which includes the lower part of the body and the antrum. Three reflexes control the gastric reservoir part. First we have the receptive relaxation reflex um, and this is due to mechanical stimulation of the pharynx by swallowing so there is a vagal stimulation, there is stimulation of the vagal center in the brain stem and there is input, uh, inhibitory input from the vagal fibers to the red part of the stomach leading to relaxation in order to receive the food. The second mechanism is called the adaptive relaxation mechanism when there is um, distension of the uh, red part of the stomach and stimulation of the stretch receptors at the wall of the stomach leading to vagal stimulation and more inhibition of the um, wall of the stomach in order to accommodate more food. The third mechanism is called feedback relaxation mechanism. 
and this reflects when the food reaches the duodenum and there is vagovagal stimulation also leading to more relaxation of the red part of the stomach for the caudate part of the stomach or the gastric pump part of the stomach there are three phases the first phase is called propulsion phase in this phase there is rapid flow of liquids with suspended small particles and delayed flow of large particles towards the pylorus the second phase is called the emptying phase in this phase there is emptying of liquids with small particles whereas large particles are retained in the terminal antrum uh, the final phase is called retropulsion phase in this phase there is retropulsion of large particles and clearing uh, of the terminal antrum so what are the pathophysiological changes that take place after sleeve gastrectomy following sleeve gastrectomy and resection of almost all gastric pundus and the gastric pacemaker the receptive relaxation is abolished the adaptive relaxation is greatly altered so any small amount of food can create high intragastric pressure also if part of the antrum is removed there will be alteration in gastric motility there will be faster gastric emptying we will end up with open non-reactive pylorus and probably bile reflux as well leading to more increase in the intragastric pressure and finally reflux what about the acid secretion of the stomach uh, this picture can show you the distribution of the parietal cells or acid secreting cells in the stomach as you can see the maximal concentration of parietal cells is in the body like 100% of its cells are parietal or HCL secreting cells uh, there is about 75% of the cells at the lesser curvature are acid secreting cells while we have only 50% of the cells at the fundus are acid secreting cells and uh, there is no uh, acid secreting cells at the cardia or at the pyloric antrum gastrin is the main regulator of gastric acid secretion it's of course a hormone uh, produced in the g cells which are mainly located in the antrum but also they are located in the proximal duodenum as well after sleeve gastrectomy acid secretion is greatly diminished like 80 percent of its amount is diminished but it is not enough to inhibit the gastrin secretion from the intact antrum by the negative feedback so there will be a state of hypergastrinemia with all of its complications then what about the anti-reflux barriers the anti-reflux barriers uh, include the following the lower esophageal sphincter the hiatal canal and the diaphragmatic crura the phrenoesophageal membrane the anatomic configuration of the gastroesophageal junction like the sharp angle of Hess and the rosette like configuration of the top end of the gastric mucosal folds. To start with the anatomy of the lower esophageal sphincter, uh, it's formed of two types of fibers, the clasp fibers. They are arranged in a C shaped manner, arising from the left and the right sides that clasp each other. Towards the left side, the C shaped fibers intermingle with the gastric sling fibers. The sling fibers are part of the longitudinal muscle layer. They loop around the gastroesophageal junction on its left side and run parallel to the lesser curvature, as I explained before. They are more sensitive to cholinergic stimulation and play an important role in the formation and the modulation of the angle of Hess. So, if we look at this diagram, we can see the shape of the sling fibers and the clasp of fibers during a relaxed a gastroesophageal junction and upon their a contraction like this they increase uh, the angle of Hess so they preserve the gastroesophageal junction if there is disruption of the lower esophageal uh, sphincter during sleeve gastrectomy uh, the patient may suffer from a reflux later on 
So the location of the line of transection may increase the incidence of reflux. So the line of transection must be away from the uh, sling fibers and like one centimeter from the angle of Hess to preserve the sling fibers. If the uh, transection uh, line was too close to the angle of Hess, this may disrupt the sling fibers like this. Next, I will discuss the esophageal hiatus and the right uh, cross of the diaphragm. The esophageal hiatus is a short S-shaped channel. It is formed by the right cross of the diaphragm. The central fibers have a relatively circular arrangement while its peripheral fibers are oriented in a craniocaudal direction. Upon contraction of the uh, right cross of the diaphragm, there will be a vertical motion increasing the angle of the esophagus or the angle of Hess and there will also be circumferential squeeze. Next, the phrenoesophageal ligament. It is um, a condensation of connective tissue that anchors the gastroesophageal junction and in the same time permits its adequate ability. Um, it's formed of two leaflets. The upper one is thick and inserts into the esophageal wall above the esophageal hiatus while its lower leaflet is thinner and inserts like 1 to 2 cm above the gastroesophageal angle. The leaflets degenerate over time being replaced by adipose tissue that's why sliding hernia is more common in old people. Next I will discuss uh, a serious complication which is the leak that may follow after sleeve gastrectomy. Um, there are two types of leaks. Mechanical leaks are usually discovered during uh, the first days postoperatively, and the other type of leak is ischemic leaks tend to occur later on between the fifth and seventh days postoperatively when wound healing is between the inflammatory and fibrotic phases. The technical factors responsible for the leak, um, like sm uh, using small pudgy size or injury to the gastric wall during hemostasis or dissecting maneuvers. The other pathophysiological factors include uh, the high intragastric pressure, the sliding of the gastric tube in the thorax, the low thickness of the gastric fundus wall, and the presence of a critical area of vascularization on the left side of the cardia and this is what I'm going to focus upon now. As you can see in this diagram, the arterial supply of the stomach is derived from the celiac trunk either directly from its branches like the left gastric for example or indirectly through um, other branches that arise from uh, the hepatic artery. The arteries of the stomach form two loops along its lesser and greater curvatures. Like we see in this diagram, you can see the celiac trunk. You can see the uh, three branches that arise from the celiac trunk, the left gastric, the hepatic, and the splenic. The left gastric um, winds around the lesser curvature of the stomach while um, the hepatic gives rise to the right gastric artery that meet uh, or communicate with the left gastric along the lesser curvature. Also along the greater curvature we have the left and right gastroepiploic arteries and we have the short arteries near the fundus of the stomach. There are two types of end arteries in the stomach. We have what's called mucosal end arteries of extramural origin. They are found on the lesser curvature only, uh, like the middle one you can see in this diagram. It arises uh, outside the external muscle layer, penetrated, and then um, does not share in any anastomosis in the submucosal plexus, and then just penetrate the muscularis uh, mucosal layer, and then uh, supply the mucosa. So that's why it's called the mucosal and the arteries of extramural origin. The second type are the usual mucosal arteries that are found throughout the stomach and they arise from the submucosal plexus 
within the wall, they penetrate the muscularis mucosa, but they do not communicate with each other. In this diagram, you can see the distribution of the uh, mucosal in the arteries of extramural origin. Like you see, they increase in number till they reach the first part of the duodenum, and that's why the uh, duodenal ulcer is more common in this region. It is said that the stomach can survive ischemia or necrosis after ligation of all uh, of all of its arteries, but the right gastroepiploic and perhaps the right gastric as well. For the blood supply of the fundus and the lower esophageal junction. Uh, the distal esophagus and the gastroesophageal junction are supplied by branches from the left gastric artery and the left inferior phrenic arteries on its right side and on its left side it is supplied by branches from the short gastric and the posterior gastric artery that arise from the proximal, middle or distal segments uh, of the splenic artery. There is an area called vascular critical area that lies at the angle of Hess. It lies between the anosmose between the branches of the left gastric, posterior gastric, and left phrenic artery. Uh, this area is vulnerable for ischemia if uh, there is no proper dissection of the posterior gastric artery during sleeve gastrectomy. And this area may suffer from uh, ischemia and leak. This is the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening. Please do not forget to like, subscribe, and share.